These are the largest rivers in Europe. The Danube, the Dnipro, the Don. They all carry their water to the Black Sea. Let's imagine that the catchment areas of the seas will form a distinct country. What would the world map look like? In the first part of the video, talked about the Caribbean, Caspian, Baltic, and other seas. So let's continue. The territory of the Black Sea State is more than 2 million square kilometers. The largest countries in Africa, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Algeria, have approximately the same territory. The largest share of the population would be represented in Ukraine, about 22. But Bavaria and Austria have the greatest influence on the economy. Just imagine, this small territory accounts for 36% of the total economy of such a state. Vienna, Budapest, Kiyu, and Ankara are the major cities in the country. Odessa is the largest city on the coast of the Black Sea. The city is also located near the geographical center of the Black Sea state. As for me, Odessa is the best option for the role of the capital. Next door to the west is a North Sea country with one million more people. It has a territory the size of Texas and is inferior to other European seas in this respect. But the situation is radically different in terms of economic size. The North Sea generates more than 8.5 trillion GDP. This is significantly more than the Baltic, Black, and Caspian Seas combined. Even if we add the economy of the Persian Gulf, we will only be equal to the North Sea. The Rhine and Elbe River valleys contribute to the region's economic growth, and its favorable geographical location ensures the development of maritime trade. London and Berlin are the largest cities in such a state, and the capital would be Rotterdam as the main port of the North Sea and Europe. The Gulf of Mexico is in seventh place, with a population of 188 million inhabitants. Notice anything interesting? Just look at how the contours of the Gulf of Mexico watershed exactly follow the contour of the entire North America. It looks like some kind of fractal. The main river of the continent, the Mississippi, flows here. The Gulf of Mexico country has the highest GDP per capita among all other participants in our video. In total, the economy would be $11 trillion, but there is one sea that has an even more powerful economy. We will find out about it at the end of the video. In the heart of the country is the so-called Texas Circle. It is among the top 10 most powerful circles in the world with a GDP of more than $2 trillion. See my previous video for the full ranking. The city of Houston, with direct access to the Gulf of Mexico, is a good choice for the capital. Next is the South China Sea, with a population of more than half a billion people. The rivers of Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, and southern China carry their waters to the sea. It also includes the western part of the islands of Taiwan and Luzon, which are among the top 10 most populated islands in the world. The water area of the South China Sea is the busiest in terms of cargo traffic. Look, here are just the tankers and cargo ships at sea at this moment in time. The economy of this country is $4.7 trillion, which is comparable to Japan or Germany, but there is a contrast. For example, Guangdong province in China accounts for almost half of the total GDP. I have chosen Hong Kong as the capital of the South China Sea. The Mediterranean Sea is in fifth place. It has a population of 564 million people, and a very unique shape of the water catchment area. In fact, the area can be divided into the Nile Valley and the Mediterranean itself. The Nile Valley accounts for 64% of the territory and more than 40% of the total population. But its GDP is only 10%, while Spain and France account for 11% each. Italy is the most important, accounting for about a third of the total economy. 
If we leave aside the Nile Valley, the shape of the Mediterranean basin's borders strongly resembles the Roman Empire. That is why I chose Rome as the capital of the Mediterranean state. But wait, this is not a complete map. The waters of the Black Sea also flow into the Mediterranean through the Bosphorus Strait. Yes, and then it would be a mega state covering the territory of more than 40 current countries, with its capital in Istanbul. But even in this case, the Mediterranean Confederation ranks only fourth in terms of population, and its total land area is smaller than Australia. The lands of the Arabian Sea are even more populated. In essence, it would also be a confederation of the Red Sea, the Persian Gulf, and the Indus Valley. It is difficult to overestimate the influence of such a country on the geopolitical and economic situation in the current world. Just think about it. The Persian Gulf holds about 50% of the world's oil reserves, the Indus Valley and Western India have a huge labor pool, and the Red Sea is a crucial strategic corridor for maritime trade between Europe and Asia. Despite its vast territory and stretch from Suez to Mumbai, such a state would be predominantly populated by Muslims. The only obstacle to the power of an Arabic state would be internal military conflicts. Mumbai and Karachi are the most populated cities, while Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and Muscat have modern infrastructure. It is difficult for me to choose a capital among them, so I suggest you do it in the comments. In second place is a real megapower, the East China Sea. More than 1 billion people live in this area. This is not surprising, as about 700 million people live in the Huanghe and Yangtze River valleys alone. I talked about the most populated river valleys in my previous videos. I recommend watching them. This country also includes almost the entire territory of the Korean Peninsula, southern Japan, and the northern part of Taiwan. Look, it is home to the world's leading cities of Beijing, Shanghai, Taipei, and Seoul. Together, they generate more than $2 trillion in GDP, and in total, the East China Sea has the largest economy of all the participants in this video, almost $16 trillion. This is twice as much as the Mediterranean Sea Confederation, and four times as much as the Arabian Sea. Even if the North, Black, Baltic and Caspian Seas unite into a single economic union, it will still be inferior to the East China Sea. I think that the capital of such a powerful state would be Shanghai. It is the largest city in the region and the largest port in the world in terms of cargo turnover. And here is the leader of our rating. It is a country in the Bay of Bengal with a population of 1,336,000,000 people. This is comparable to the population of today's India and China. About half of the total territory is covered by the Ganges and Brahmaputra Valley, which is one of the most densely populated regions in the world. Look, the states of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal, and the entire territory of Bangladesh are located here. Unlike the East China Sea, the GDP per capita is much lower, only $2.5,000 per year, which is the lowest in our ranking. I chose the city of Kolkata as the capital of Bengal, which from 1772 to 1911 had already performed such a role in this region. This is how the most populated sea states will look like on the world map. Do you think the world could exist in such a concept? Thank you for watching. Please support my channel by subscribing or donating on Patreon. See you in the next videos.